Hey, what is going on, Aperture family? My name is Ted, and today, if you don't know what you're watching, this right now is the 60D60X live product presentation and product launch. So today we have two new fixtures from Aperture. We're going to walk through everything that you need to know about these new fixtures as far as the lighting specifications go, what accessories are included, how they compare to other industry standard fixtures. And for a lot of you people out there, I know you've been waiting for this fixture. We showed it last year. And yes, today is officially the live launch day, the shipping day for these new lights, and they're coming out today. So. Real quick, if you're watching this, again, this is live. We recorded this just yesterday, but live in the sense that all of us in the Aperture team are actually in the comments right now. I should be there as well. We're going to be answering all your questions live, hanging out with you guys. So if you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in that comment box and we'll get to them right away. Likewise, if you're watching this stream, let us know where you're tuning in from. We definitely want to see where the Aperture family has grown to. It's always nice to see all the cities that are popping in. So let us know where you're watching from as well. But... Without much further ado, let's do this. Let's talk about the two newest fixtures from Aperture, the Lightstorm 60D and 60X. Let's do this. Portable, powerful, packed with features. Introducing the Lightstorm 60D and 60X. The Aperture 60D and 60X are an evolution our first focusable light since the original Mini 20. Combining aperture color science with a compact metal build, both the 60D and 60X feature a weatherproof build, industry standard yoke, modular power solutions, and a built-in variable beam angle. Whether you need intensity or flexibility, the LS60 series presents both, a powerful daylight balanced fixture or an expanded bicolor lighting tool. In full 15 degree spot mode, the 60D is able to output 50,000 lux at one meter, while the 60X is able to emit 30,000 lux, giving you brightness when you need it most. And with the turn of a dial, the color temperature of the 60X can be adjusted between 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin, making source matching easier than ever. With built-in aspherical optics, the 60D and 60X both present a variable beam angle of 15 to 45 degrees, giving you all the flexibility of a traditional compact Fresnel with the adaptability of LED technology, nine built-in lighting effects, and multiple powering methods. In addition to AC power, users can use not only professional DTAP batteries, but also the most common battery of all, Sony NPF. Our specially designed dual NPF battery plate brings intelligent power to both fixtures. Two NPF batteries can be used for max output or a single battery for half output. The rosette style yoke uses the standard V-mount locking system to equip the light with any power solution you choose. Each power solution also connects to the LS60 lights using a weatherproof auto-locking connection. Like any aperture fixture, both the 60D and 60X are integrated with Sidus Mesh technology, meaning that every fixture not only communicates with your smartphone or tablet, but also all other aperture fixtures, like the MC or 600D Pro. Control everything from intensity, CCT, and lighting effects from anywhere on set. With the push of a button, users now have access to an entire ecosystem of powerful lighting control, with each fixture strengthening and increasing the range of the network. But control doesn't stop with just Sidus Link. The 60D and 60X are also designed to be modified. Every light comes equipped with both eight leaf barn doors and a Bowens mount adapter that converts the 60D and 60X into the most universal accessory mount and makes both fixtures compatible with all Bowens soft light modifiers, like the Aperture Lantern and Light Dome Mini 2. We're also introducing two new accessories, the Spotlight Mini Zoom and LS60 Softbox. The Spotlight Mini Zoom is a precision cut projection attachment designed for the LS60 lights. Featuring a 15 to 30 degree 2x optical zoom, the Spotlight Mini Zoom combines the power of multiple lenses into one, creating both a variable beam angle and unprecedented light shaping ability. 
The Spotlight Mini Zoom is the perfect tool to use in conjunction with bounces and reflective lighting technology. The Spotlight Mini Zoom also comes packed with an M size iris and 15 M size gobos for a wide range of possibilities. For users who want to soften light, the LS60 Softbox is a compact square light bank that complements the size and strength of the 60D and 60X. It also features two fabric options for front diffusion, and using the same native mount as the LS60 barn doors, this softbox takes the compact punch of the 60D and transforms them into a 14 inch by 14 inch soft source, with a diffusion area that is larger than a standard 1x1 LED panel. From focusable hard light, to a shapeable projection light, to a soft source in no time at all. This is our new Swiss Army light. This is the Lightstorm 60D and 60X. Alrighty guys, let's do it. I've got the Lightstorm 60X right here in front of me. I got the 60D right back there. I've got the Spotlight Mini Zoom here as well and the 60D, 60X softbox. So we're gonna be going through all the features that you need to know. Likewise, I've got the actual fixtures here in the flesh. So if you want us to play and use and show any of the features, we'll get to that in just a little bit as well. But let's talk about these fixtures in detail. Let's show some of the data and the specifications that we're excited about. Let's do this, let's get that PowerPoint up and running. So, as you guys know, Aperture, we have been around for not that long, actually. We've been growing very quickly, and it's very exciting. And this right here is the 60D and 60X. So, you just saw the launch film. You just saw everything that you've been seeing as far as how the fixture works. But let's break down what that exactly means bit by bit in the actual overview here. So, starting off, let's talk about the 60D and 60X as far as brightness. We're talking about 50,000 lux for the 60D at 3 meters away. 30,000 lux for the 60X at three meters away. Again, bicolor tends to be about just about half as bright as the daylight versions of these lights. Now, what does that generally mean? That means that these are generally comparable to a 650 watt tungsten Fresnel. We'll talk about that in the comparisons in just a little bit. These are one of the first aperture lights ever that do have a built-in spot flood adjustable beam angle, which means that all of these lights, both of them, have a 15 to 45 degree adjustable beam angle. They have, as far as the 60D goes, and the color temperature rating of 5600 Kelvin. As far as the bicolor model goes, we actually have it going from 2700 Kelvin all the way up to 6500 Kelvin. All of these lights are dust and weatherproof, which we'll talk about, and you've already seen a little bit in the commercial. These are powerable via multiple power methods, but one of those power methods is one NPF battery, which means that, yes, these are lights that can be powered off of a single NPF, which is, again, the most common battery out there. We'll talk more about that in a bit. These are all Cytus Link app integrated, which means that they will work with your entire Aperture ecosystem on a free, ready-to-use phone app that's ready to go. They also have a custom Bones mount adapter. Again, on the front of all these lights, we have the mini mount, which we'll talk about what that means, but they all actually ship and come with a Bones mount adapter that lets you use these with things like your Light Dome and your Light Dome Mini 2. And then finally, all these lights have up to nine built-in lighting effects, and I'll say what up to means in just a little bit, but moving on to photometrics. So I think this is one of the biggest questions that people have. How bright is the 60D and 60X? When we're talking about lighting, I think this is the first question that we get asked all the time. And let me say again, it's always a difficult comparison to do, right? We're talking about tungsten versus HMI to LED, but let's talk real quick about lux and photometrics, probably the most common way that I see people measuring these things. So let's break into what that means as far as industry comparisons. Now, on the left here, we've got the RE650 watt tungsten light. Again, a classic light, uh, probably one of the industry workhorses out there. I've seen so many people using these kits. I own one of these kits, use it all the time. It's fantastic and never fails. Now, as far as brightness goes, we're talking about a spot to flood of 13 all the way up to 54. At flood, at 54 degrees, we're looking at 1,194 lux. At spot, we're looking at 5,861 lux. So again, workhorse fixture out there, but let's move to another fixture that we think is comparable to the 60D and 60X. That is the Data Light DLED 7D Turbo. This is just the daylight balanced version. Again, we're switching now from tungsten technology to LED technology. This is a 90 watt tungsten light at spot, which again, we're looking at six degrees. We're looking at approximately 4,222 lux. Again, look at that six degree measurement over there. As far as flood goes, we're looking at a 60 degree measurement as far as beam angle goes, and we're looking at approximately 278 lux. Now, where does the aperture light fall into here? 
So as far as the aperture light, we are looking at something that right here, we're talking about a flood of 45 degrees as far as the beam angle goes. We're starting off at 1,000 lux, but right there at the 15 degree spot angle, we're looking at 7,000 lux. So for people out there that are wondering, this is a very, very small fixture. Very, very small. You can see the scope as far as how it is next to me. Uh, and this light right here, Again, comparative to its size, absolutely does match as far as brightness goes to a 650 watt tungsten light. So for anyone out there that's using a three light kit or in those senses or wants that industry workhorse fixture, uh, this we think is going to be the perfect option for you guys as well. Now for the Dado audience as well too, I think one of the big questions that we get is how does it compete as far as bicolor goes? So let's talk real quick about bicolor as well. Here are the same thing. We're looking at photometrics and lux at distance of three meters away. This time we're comparing it to an RE 300 watt tungsten fixture because again, we we're talking about bicolor, which means that this is a bicolor fixture. It's gonna be about half as bright as your daylight partner. Uh, as far as the 300 watt tungsten goes, we're looking at approximately 500 lux. We're looking at 1,867 lux when we're looking at that spot of 15 degrees. Moving on from there, let's go to our Dado bicolor LED fixture, which again, we think is probably a closer comparison because we're going from tungsten to LED instead of LED to LED. So LED to LED, how does the 60X compete as far as the rest of the industry standards? So let's look at this real quick. This real quick is the Aperture 60X. We are looking at for the flood and we're doing both daylight and bicolor. So we're looking at the 5600 Kelvin reading and the 3200 Kelvin tungsten reading. At the daylight version at full flood, we're looking at approximately 630 lux. Again, 3800 lux for our 15 degree spot. Again, we were comparing a six degree spot for the data light to a 15 degree spot for the Aperture 60X. For the bicolor mode, for going to our 3200 Kelvin, we're going down to 580 lux. And again, a strong 3400 lux for our spot at 15 degrees. So again, this is the standard measurement of beam angle. We are measuring that 50% drop off from the center of that beam. So as far as brightness goes for both the daylight fixture and the bicolor fixture, how does it compare to industry standard fixtures out there? Well, regardless of whether you're looking at LED or tungsten, we think that this will match up perfectly and work pretty well. All right, so moving on from photometrics, let's go to color science, which I think is probably the next biggest question we get as far as LED fixtures go. We know that it's bright, right? But how does it actually match up as far as color renditioning? Again, LEDs, when they came out, we all are, I think, painfully aware of when they had that green and magenta spike. Aperture lights, one of the biggest things that we made when we came onto the market was guaranteeing that every single fixture that we updated would automatically have a CRI of 95 or higher. So how does the 60D and 60X compare? Well, let's start off with the CRI. We're looking at above 96. We're talking about a TLCI of 98 plus. Again, we're talking about our Aperture Lightstorm lights here. So again, the strongest color conditioning that we can try to pull out of this fixture we have done in the LED selection process. Talking about SSI, again, if we're comparing the literal spectrum that comes out of this light to the spectrum of a tungsten light, we're looking at an 86 which I am beyond happy about. And then finally, if we're looking at the SSI score for our daylight reading, we're still looking at a very strong 74. Again, for anyone out there that's not familiar with SSI, anything above 70 is considered absolutely excellent. This is virtually indistinguishable from actual sunlight or actual tungsten light when you're looking at it to the eyes. So uh, very, very excited about these fixtures. How does the color conditioning work for both of them? We're looking at fixtures that, again, very, very strong as far as the output and the color fidelity both together. But moving on from there, let's talk about our next topic that we're doing here. We're going to talk real quick about the interface and the controls. So when we're talking about any kind of new lighting fixture. What we want to do is we want to make sure that this is not only a light that's powerful and beautiful as far as the actual color conditioning that comes out of it, but we want to make sure that it's easy, intuitive, and quick to use. So on the back here, we're showing a new aperture control system that we're really excited about. On the front here, we've got the OLED display, which again, if you're familiar with, is already the same technology that's being used in kind of high-end televisions. We've built that into the electronics of this fixture. But on the side here, it kind of looks like from the 2D, uh, 3D rendering that you're looking at, it kind of looks like those are wheels, but those are not wheels. Those are actually knobs that are also buttons. So on the left here, you've got your CCT knob, which again, right underneath your CCT display, so you can control your CCT. And you've also got your menu knob. So if you press this, you'll go into the menu. If you roll it, you'll actually change your CCT. On the right here, you've got your intensity selection. So again, right underneath your intensity reading, that 0% right there. If I want to change my intensity, all I got to do is just twist that knob and I'll be able to change my intensity. And likewise, if I'm in the menu or I want to change what I'm selecting, this actually says OK because that is your selection mode there on the bottom. On the bottom of this fixture, we're looking at what I think is probably the most exciting feature for a lot of people. We're looking at spot and flood control. So I've got an actual light here that I can show off right to date. So as you can see right here underneath the color temperature mode, I can actually go through and change my color temperature. So just like that, I've changed to my tungsten 2700 Kelvin all the way up to my 6500 daylight. My intensity knob, again, controllable here. 
I can change it super seamlessly, very easy, intuitive. But then finally, if I want to change my spot and flood, you'll see automatically as I point this right to a wall, let's tilt this up a little bit to give you guys a clearer view. I can now just twist this knob and just like that, I now have full spot and flood control. And again, this is a pretty tight shot here, but hopefully you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about here. That is that 15 to 45 degree spot flood control right here in real time. So as far as interface and controls go, uh, we tried to build this to make this as simple as possible. Again, one power button, three knobs, and those three knobs control color temperature, intensity, and again, your spot flood control on here. Now, let's talk about the other controls that are possible for this kind of light as well. So talking about those additional features here, we're talking about nine built-in lighting effects, which means that yes, this light does automatically have built into the actual fixture, things like paparazzi or television mode or lightning or explosion, which is again, triggerable. You can actually press it and say, I want my explosion to start now and then fade out very slowly. You've also got dimming curves built into this. So if you want to change the way that you dim your light, most of the time your light is gonna be set to linear, which means that every percent changes your lighting the same amount. But if you want that curve to be exponential, you can change that as well too. I think exponential is popular for a lot of people doing product stuff, especially they want that smooth ease in and ease out when they change their lighting. And then finally on the right here, you've got studio mode, which I think is a mode that a lot of people don't know what it does, but it's really exciting because uh, for a lot of people out there that are used to kind of the traditional tungsten fixtures and they want to make sure that when I plug in my light, it turns on. And when I unplug my light, it turns off. Studio mode will mean that the light will automatically ignore the power switch that's actually operating on it. And when I patch in my light or unplug my light, the entire fixture will turn on and turn off the same settings that you had it at last. So for you people out there that like the way that your traditional fixtures work, studio mode will make sure that you still have that mode available and ready to go. Now, beyond the modes that are on the actual interface, let's talk about what I think is probably one of the most exciting updates, period, in Aperture Fixtures, and that is that these are fully Citus Link compatible fixtures. So, as you can see here on the actual video, we have full app control that is free, not only through your phone, via your iPhone or your Android phone, but if you wanna do your iPad control as well too, you wanna to be able to see your entire thing in the same way that I think you see a lot of your DMX or wireless DMX fixtures, uh, this will actually have that automatically built in via, again, Citus Bluetooth Mesh, which if you don't know what that is, one more time for the people in the back, uh, Citus Mesh basically means that every single Aperture fixture is not only connecting to your phone or your iPad, It'll actually also connect to every single other aperture fixture in the entire aperture lighting ecosystem, which means that every light that I add to the ecosystem that is Citus Mesh compatible will actually build the network, it'll strengthen the network, it actually makes it more stable, and it'll actually throw the signal and bounce signals through each fixture. So if something like your phone dies or something like that, all you need to do is just grab somebody else's phone, log in, and you can tap into the nearest light. And that will relay the controls to all of the other fixtures in the Citus Aperture ecosystem. So for people out there that are wondering, because I've seen this question probably a million times, is the 60D and 60X Citus Mesh compatible? And that is an absolute resounding yes. So I'm going to grab the phone real quick. I'll show you guys real quick what that means. I've got this real quick. I'm going to connect my fixtures. And just to show you how easy it is to be able to control my fixtures, I have my phone here, which I'll show you guys here. Thank you, Jamin, for the amazing focus pull. Give it up for Jamin. Uh, if I want to go through and just click on my fixtures and I want to change things like my intensity, all I need to do is just dim that. And just like that, in real time, you can see behind me, that light is actually changing in intensity. And if I want to turn that fixture off, I can turn that fixture off just like that everything will actually update in real time. And this applies for all of my lights. If I wanna change my color temperature, all I need to do is just drag one finger over. And just like that, you can see in the back, all of my lights are changing color temperature seamlessly. And we've actually already built in shortcuts too. So if I wanna do 32, 4,000 Kelvin, 5,600 Kelvin, I can automatically jump between those. If I want that at quarter brightness, half brightness, full brightness, all of that jumps in. If I wanna do things like effects, let's say, uh, you know, I really like this paparazzi effect that I got going on. But let's say I want to do it with all of my fixtures. All I need to do is hop over here, go to paparazzi mode. And just like that now, I have multiple fixtures that are doing the paparazzi flashes. Uh, I will turn these to camera so you can see a little bit more of what we're looking at here. But just like that, all of these fixtures will now flash in real time. I can trigger them like explosions, remote trigger, trigger, just like that. Everything is built in, automatically ready to go, and you don't have to worry about customizing or anything like that. So. Are these lights side and slink compatible one more time? Absolutely, yes. Now, moving on from controls, let's talk real quick about the next thing that I think is important for this fixture, and that is our power options. Now, when we talk about these lights, I think one of the biggest things to know is for people out there that are familiar, 
like original Aperture users out there that used the Mini 20D or the Mini 20C. I think these were two of our oldest fixtures out there. They were really small hair lights that were designed to be quick and fast. They were a plastic build. Again, this is kind of like original beginning Aperture when we didn't really know what we were doing. But at this point, for people out there that are wondering, in a lot of ways, the 60D and 60X is a older brother or bigger version of the Mini 20 lights. So a couple of things that the Mini 20 lights were really well known for was their absolute power versatility. So let's talk real quick about how that power versatility has been carried over into a new and improved model here. So on the PowerPoint presentation, you can see over here on the left, we've got our AC power adapter, which means that yes, these fixtures are powerable via my AC power adapter. Likewise, I also can power these off of a DTAP battery port. So that means that any V-mount or gold mount battery will work with these lights. And let's talk about how that actually mounts. So on the side here, this is something that we are really excited about because one of our biggest things was, okay, we want to be able to give you AC power design, but we don't want to build in the adapter to add additional weight. At the same time, we want this to be DTAP powerable, and we also want to give you NPF power ability, right? So those are three different power models. How do we build all this into one fixture while making it the smallest, most lightweight and compact fixture on the market? So to do this, we did one thing here, very quick, very easy. On the side here, we've actually got a V-mount built into here. Now this is a passive V-mount plate, which means that yes, we have automatically built in a V-mount clip onto your AC power adapter. So if you are going off of AC power, all you need to do is just click in here and now you don't have to worry about a dangling power supply or anything like that. So just like that, I can put on my V-mount battery plate, but if I wanna walk over here and I wanna change this out with something else, all I need to do is come over here. I have a weatherproofed auto locking connector and all I need to do is unplug that and this will be ready to go. So with this, this is now an interchangeable power method. So all I need to do is just take this, I can remove this, and now this V-plate is open. And if I walk over here and I've got something like, say, an IDX V-mount battery, or really any V-mount or gold mount battery on the market, all I need to do is just take the same V-mount plate, attach it over here onto the side, and just clip in like that. So now automatically on the yoke, I've now mounted my battery source. Since this is powered off of DTAP, I've got this cable over here. I'll take this cable, run this over here, just patch that in. Go over here, we automatically include, again, all these cables with the actual packaging. So if I come over, clip that in, just like that, I am now back on regular battery power. So just like that, this is a powerable fixture that can be powered off of DTAP batteries. So V-mount or gold mount, no problem whatsoever, this should be good to go. Now if I power this off, take this off, and remove this battery plate, let's show you one more powering option that we developed here for all of the more budget conscious people out there, or for the people that want the slimmest, most quick profile lighting system that you can get on the market. So just to show one more powering option here, I'm gonna grab this one more accessory that we designed over here at Aperture. And this real quick is the dual NPF battery plate designed by Aperture. So this looks like a pretty standard NPF battery plate, but what's cool about it is a couple of things. Number one, on the back here, you've got, bada bing, that V-mount battery plate once more. So if I come over here and snap that in, just like that, it'll actually clip onto my actual device. If I wanna change out my power adapter, once again, all I need to do is just unclip that, patch this in, and just like that now, I have got, again, another powering system. So all I need to do is just take my NPF batteries, snap those in one at a time. There's one, and here is two, and just like that, I'm now powered up and ready to go. You can see the light is on, powered off of two NPF batteries. So as I said before, two NPF batteries will actually give you 100% power, but one of the things that we were very, very concerned with was we wanted to make sure that even if you only had one NPF battery, it's the end of a day or you're shooting a wedding or you're on set and it's hour 13 and you wanna go home, but you're running out of battery power. One of the things that we also made sure of was that if you actually wanted to power this off of single battery operation, you can actually power these lights off of a single NPF as well too. So again, a lot of fixtures out there that need double power, this will automatically set its power levels at 50% output and this can be powered off of a single Sony NPF. So, Three different powering options, three different powering methods. We include all the cabling, all the supports, and all the adapters that you need. So no matter where you find yourself, no matter what powering methods you've got, you will be able to power the 60D and 60X with no problems. So moving on, let's talk real quick about build quality. What does this light mean as far as how does it stack up to a lot of the other lights that are on the market? Well, first let's break down what are all the parts of the 60D and 60X. So let's get this view up. 
Real quick, how the lights actually work. On the front here, we've got our barn doors that snap into what we call mini mount. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. On the top here, we have a silent smart fan. Again, on the top here, this silent smart fan is waterproof in its actual design, which means that again, weather resistant and dust resistant. You shouldn't have to worry about this in the elements. On the side here, we've got our rosette style yoke. We opted for this knob, which you guys might find a little bit familiar for you 120D Mark I users out there. We've designed and upgraded. We've actually upgraded the actual material and build of that knob over there. But we opted for this design because we wanted this to be the most compact, easily fittable light into hard to reach places. And then finally on the back here, this is that weatherproof connector that I just showed you guys. This weatherproof connector will actually let you swap out different battery solutions and actually power your 60D and 60X no matter where you're going. So moving on, also on the front of the light, we've got the spherical focusing lens over here. This is actually glass that we have designed here at Aperture. And this lens is actually what will allow you to get that 15 to 45 degree built in spot and flood focusing ability. On the front here, we've got mini mount, which is a new accessory mount that you guys aren't familiar with yet it's because we've just designed it at Aperture. This is the first line that we're rolling it out. Mini mount's important because the bones mount is fantastic. It's universal, but it's a little bit large as far as the size goes. So mini mount is something that we've designed here to actually be able to snap on things like barn doors. You can actually remove the barn doors through the same system. And we've also designed a couple of accessories for mini mount, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But for all of you people out there that are wondering, can I use my 60D and 60X with things like my Light Dome Mark II or my Light Dome Mini or my Lantern? The answer is a resounding yes, because we do include, included with the package of every kit, we also include a mini mount to Bowens mount adapter. So you will be able to use all these lights with all of your Light Dome soft accessories as well. Finally, on the side here, we've got that V-mount receiver, which I just showed you guys in the powering option. And then finally, on the back, of course, we've got these spot and flood focusing knob. Now, moving on from there, I think what's important to talk about is we've talked a lot about build, we've talked a lot about design, we've talked a lot about brightness and color fidelity, but I think we need to come back to comparisons because how does this light actually compare as far as weight and footprint to the industry standards out there. So we're bringing out the lights that we just showed here before. We're talking about the LightStorm 60D, 60X. We're comparing this to the DLED by Turbo series. So the 90 watt light out there. If you wanna look real quick, we've already listed all the dimensions of the lights here. So you can see the dimensions, but what I think is more interesting than the actual dimensions is let's take a look at that volume over there. This is the cubic inches volume of all the lights listed. So we're looking at again, approximately 280, 290 cubic inches for the DLED from Dano Light. We're looking at approximately 810 cubic inches from the RE 650 watt tungsten light, approximately 500 cubic inches for the RE 300 watt light. Now, as far as how the 60D and 60X compares, we are looking at something that comes in at around 335 cubic inches. So what does that mean? That this means that this is a light that is absolutely comparable as far as size and footprint of the Data Light DLED 90 watt series. So because we used our cubic measurements for our volume over here, we switched to our metric measurements on the bottom. So we have 1.3 kilograms, 3.3 kilograms, and 3.3 kilograms for our comparisons of the Data Light versus the RE650 and the RE300 watt tungsten lights. Now, how this compares with all those lights out there, the LS 60D and 60X absolutely comes in very comparable again, once again. We are less in weight and brighter than both of the tungsten fixtures that we've listed here. Then compared to the data light, we are just a little bit larger and just a little bit heavier, but again, absolutely comparable. Very, very small footprint. For all of you guys out there that have used those data lights, you know how small and compact they are. This is absolutely comparable as far as size and footprint. Finally, I think we need to talk about something that we are really excited about with the After Series. You guys saw it in the 600D. I've seen people doing the craziest things with their lights, taking them out into snowstorms and hailstorms and rainstorms with their fixtures. Again, I'm not gonna recommend that you do this, but one of the things that I wanna say is that all of these lights have been tested. They are weather resistant as far as the actual durability goes. Uh, we are working still on getting an IP rating because of COVID. From what we understand, the testing of the IP ratings is actually backed up a little bit. But as you can see in the commercial video here too, we have already tested and opted and tested these lights through not only light rain, but also heavy dust storms as well too. No problems whatsoever. Finally, let's talk real quick about accessories. I think this is the last thing we do before we talk about pricing and availability, which again, I think is one of the things that I'm the most excited about. But when we talk about accessories, I wanna talk about mini mount. So I showed you before about what the Bones mount lights mean as far as the other fixtures. So Bones mount again, probably one of the most universal accessory mounts out there. Mini mount was designed because the Bones mount, while beautiful and universal and fantastic, can be a little bit too large. And we're trying to make this fixture compact. So mini mount is a newly designed system here. All I gotta do is push out this tab. And when I push out the tab, I can now lift this up. It works very similar to, I think, a lot of tungsten fixtures out there. If you guys are familiar with swapping out barn doors on those fixtures. And just like that, I can now switch out my metal aluminum barn doors. So if I wanna reclip those in, all I need to do is just line this up, drop that in 
push this tab over, and just like that, I now have my barn doors back in. Now, mini mount is more than just a barn door holder, right? We would have called it a barn door holder if this is the only thing it can do. So for it to do more, mini mount needs to have more accessories. So let's talk real quick about what a couple of those accessories are. Number one off the bat, as I showed you guys before, we have the eight leaf barn doors on the left, but we've also got on the right, included with every single kit, the barn doors come and also a bones mount adapter comes, which means that yes, we automatically give you a way to convert mini mount to bones mount if you want to use your fixture with things like the Light Dome Mark II, the Light Dome Mini, or the Lantern fixture. So all these soft light modifiers, totally compatible with the 60D60X. Now let's talk about a couple of fixtures that are designed, a couple of accessories that are designed specifically for mini mount and ready to go. So one of the ones that we're the most excited about out there is the Spotlight Mini Zoom. So as far as beam angle goes, this is unlike, I think, a lot of spotlight mounts or a lot of Leica lenses that you guys are familiar with. This is an optical zoom projection lens, which means that you have a variable beam angle. You can change from a 15 degree super narrow to a 30 degree, a little bit wider beam angle as far as the actual projection goes. This is absolutely, yes, compatible with the 60D and 60X via the mini mount here that we just showed you. This is a native modifier that snaps on automatically, doesn't need to be converted to bones or anything like that. This is designed to be about the same width all the way across as far as the actual light goes too. So this is uniform in its width and design as far as the actual fixture goes. Finally, as far as accessories go for the spotlight mount, uh, just like the spotlight mount that you've seen with Aperture, these are compatible with gobos. These are a different size gobo. They're size M gobos, which are a little bit smaller. This comes with included 15 M size gobos ready to go so you can start playing and getting creative. We have a gobo holder already ready to go that's included with the spotlight mini zoom as well, as well as an 18 leaf iris that snaps into the top you can actually use to change and actually focus in your light from whatever size you want to make it. Now, for people out there that are unfamiliar with what all these beam angles and what this projection lens means, put it in layman's terms, if you are five meters away from a wall, this means that you can actually project an image of 1.4 meters to 2.8 meters. So a 1.4 to 2.8 meter wide image is something that you can project from five meters away at its widest point. Now, I think one of the biggest questions that we're gonna get asked about the Spotlight Mini Zoom is the light distribution, right? Because when you're trying to shoot a spotlight, you're not trying to create the same kind of look that you're gonna get out of a Fresnel or just something that spots and floods, right? Most of the time when you spot and flood a light, you'll have a little bit of a bright spot in the middle and it'll fall off very quickly. Now, with the spotlight mount, this is something that we absolutely 100% decided that we need to make sure was uniform and consistent the entire way through. So I've been talking before at Aperture and saying that we wanna be more advanced with our lighting distribution to show you guys exactly what's going on behind the scenes for all the lighting that, and the fixtures that we produce. So here's a quick little brightness chart here that you can see for how the spotlight actually projects light. But for people out there that can't read this and don't understand that, I want you guys to take a look at this right one over here. So section B, this is our spot uniformity. So what that means is that when you project your light, really no matter what beam angle you're going at, from the center, which is going to be 100% brightness, to the very, very edge of your light, you're looking at still over 80% brightness the entire way through, which means that your uniform beam, the light that actually comes out, is going to look extremely, extremely even all the way across. You will not notice that 20% difference. And if you can see right underneath that 80%, you are looking at a 95% brightness. So now that doesn't sound super interesting, but for us, that is super, Super exciting uh, because what that means is that you have 95% of the brightness the entire way basically across the actual projection of the light that comes out of the mini zoom. Which means that if you put things like a gobo through the actual accessory, you will notice that you actually get basically zero lighting changes the entire way. And the, the actual gobo that comes out will look the way that you intend it to. So this is something that our engineers worked super duper hard on. It's something we're super duper proud of. So again, lighting nerds out there, I think this is something we can all rejoice about. And if you don't care about this, you don't have to worry about caring about it because it's already been taken care of. Okay, speaking of which, I think because we're here and because we actually have the Spotlight Mini Zoom, I think what we should do is we should actually pull it out, show you guys how it works with the actual mini mount in full swing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this light, I'm going to push this back real quick so you can see. I'm going to grab the Spotlight Mini Zoom, which yes, does have its own mounting system here on the front. I'm gonna take that in, secure it. And just to show you guys how I take this light, and mount it onto mini mount. I'm going to walk over here, use this tab, pop it open. And just like that in real time, I'm gonna show you how quick and easy I can adjust and mount this accessory. So I walk over here, I slip this in through the mini mount that we've talked about here. Pop this on and just like that, I am now ready to go and attached. So, what this means is that when I take this light and I rotate it around, 
I'm going to rotate it this way so you guys can see a little bit of that design. Yes, I do have full spot control here. I have focusing here, which I can actually adjust via here. So if I want to get a clean circle, I can get a clean circle just like that. I can tighten that. And in real time, I get full spot and flood compatibility. Likewise, if I want to be able to change the light that comes out of this using things like, say, the four leaves, four leaves are indeed included here. So I'm going to go here. Let's find a middle point that you guys can see. That looks pretty good. If I want to make that a box, all I need to do is pop these in. I now have a box of light that I can project. If I want to make that a triangle, all I need to do is pop this open. And just like that, I can make myself a triangle. And then finally on the top here, you actually have focus control. So if I want to take the entire barrel and adjust it forwards or backwards, this will allow me to get that full focus control that I'm looking for. So I'm going to pull this into focus. And then on the top here, you're going to see we've got two slots here. So one of these slots is for an iris holder. So I'll show you guys what that looks like real quick. This does come included with the Spotlight Mini Zoom. All I need to do is take this, drop it in here, and voila. I now have fully iris controllable light that comes out of this. If I want to switch this out with something like, say, a gobo, again, we do also include the size M gobo holder. So that's what that looks like here for everyone that's wondering, right there. And then finally, of course, it also comes included with 15 gobos ready to go. So we include all of these ready to go as well, too. So if I want to grab one of these that I think looks pretty here, I like this branch loris effect. I'm going to throw that in here. Bang, just like that, I can get that. And if I want to pull this into focus, all I need to do is just adjust this front or back element. So I'm going to find my focus. That looks pretty good. We'll do that. Drop that in. And if I want to change out the designs, this is how quick it is to be able to change it with whatever else I'm feeling. So again, these are all designs that come automatic and ready to go. But if you want to custom print designs, again, all you need is size M gobos. You can ask most of the major companies to print these for you, and they'll do it pretty quickly, usually within like a one or two day turnaround. So uh, full gobo customizing here as well. So, all right. Cool, I think I covered just about everything with the Spotlight Mini Zoom. Let's talk real quick about the other accessory that we got here, and that is the Lightstorm 60 Softbox. So we have a lot of softboxes here at Aperture. What makes this one different? Well, first off, this is, of course, a mini mount compatible softbox. This will snap onto the front, and the actual size of this is actually 14 inches by 14 inches, or 35 centimeters by 35 centimeters. So what does that mean? What that means is that this will actually compare to something of a one by one LED panel, which is again, traditionally 12 inches by 12 inches. What this means is that you can actually transform your 60D and 60X into something that is larger, softer than a one by one LED panel, just like that using our quick and rapid design here. Just like most of our light dome diffusions, this also has two front diffusions on the front. You've got a 1.5 stop and a 2.5 stop. And of course, you've also got a fabric lighting control grid. So while you're looking at that slide, I'm gonna go over here, grab a light that's automatically got my soft box on here. I'm gonna pop that open and here we go. So let me drop this so it's into frame for you guys. And again, the main thing that I showed you guys before is mini mount compatible. So all I gotta do is grab this tab, pop this open. There's my mini mount. If I wanna take my soft box, which is right here, all I need to do is pop over here, drop this into the accessory mount that we've talked about here already a lot today. Mini mount, pop that in, throw this over. And just like that now, I now have a soft light, a soft modifier that I can now use that is larger than a standard one by one panel to be able to light whatever my, my interviews or running gun kits, something that's collapsible, that's fast, that's lightweight and ready to go. So as far as versatility goes, you've got a light that has a built in spot and flood. You have a light that can be your spotlight, your Leco light. This can be your focusable projection mount light. Or if you want something that's gonna compete with a lot of those ENG lights, if you want something that's gonna be a little bit more similar to say an LED panel, again, we've got all the modifiers here ready to go. So we are introducing what we think to be is one of the king of versatility lights out there on the market. This is probably one of the most exciting fixtures that we've released. And I know it's one of the fixtures that a lot of you guys have been asking for, for everyone out there that's been asking us for, when is Aperture gonna make 
a parallel light as compatible with things like reflector systems and things like the CRLS lighting system. Uh, this, I think, is going to be the perfect light for a lot of you guys out there. For everyone out there that's been wondering, I'm looking for a replacement for my standard tungsten kits, my three light kits out there. We think this is, again, going to be a perfect solution for you guys out there. And then finally, for a lot of you people out there that have been asking after, you've been asking us for like a 120D Mark III or something like that. Uh, again, this is not exactly a one-to-one -one for a 120D. Uh, it's certainly not as bright as a 120D, but that being said, as far as punch and compatibility and built-in accessories, I think for a lot of people out there, this is going to be the perfect, most versatile light that they can use. So uh, this real quick is the Lightstorm 60D and 60X, daylight for bicolor and X for crossfadable. We are thrilled about these lights coming out. So let's do it. Let's show the pricing and availability. This is the Lightstorm 60D and this is the Lightstorm 60X. These are available now if you're based in the US or in Asia right now. So again, very, very excited. These should be at dealers ready to go and ready to ship right away. We did not do pre-orders for these, so they should be available at a store nearby you. Now, one thing I do want to note, though, is that if you are in the EU or if you are in some of the APAC regions out there, we are shipping these lights as quick as we can. Right now, it's looking like they're going to arrive just one week behind. So uh, be patient. Be kind to your dealers. Please be kind to your dealers. Again, our dealers are our friends and help us get these products out to all the people that need them. Uh, but again, if you are in those regions, you are going to see them shipping just one week later. That being said, if you're in the States or you're in a lot of the North American areas, again, these are shipping today. Uh, we did not do pre-orders for these lights, so they should be available at the local stores around you. Um, and I think that's about it. So before we wrap up this stream, before we wrap up this premiere, uh, we're going to take a couple of questions about the light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this light, I'm going to move it back. And before we started this presentation, we asked for a couple of questions. So what we got here is we've got a little iPad here. And we've got a couple of the questions that you guys submitted uh, about the new lights here. We're going to answer them live. But if you're watching this, that doesn't mean that you don't have a chance to ask questions as well. Again, the entire Aperture team, myself included, are in the chat right now. We're going to be answering a lot of those questions live. So just punch in your question. Let us know. And we'll be able to answer those as well. But here are three of the questions. Again, we've got a couple here that I think are probably the most important to answer for everybody. So let's see. OK, number one. Is there a gold mount version of the 60D and 60X? And to that I say, that is a great question. As you guys are familiar with, if you watch the presentation, you know that we use that V-mount clip to be able to mount things like the two battery system for the NPF batteries that we use, the V-mount batteries mount on that way. Uh, is there a gold mount version of that? And to that I have to say, no, there is not a gold mount mount as far as the actual yoke goes, but that doesn't mean that it is not compatible with gold mount batteries. Again, we use a D-tap power cable here, which means that literally any gold mount battery will work on your actual lights. Uh, again, you won't be able to mount them onto the actual yoke, but if you want to, you can mount them any other way that you want to. And again, all these batteries still can be powered off of gold mount batteries as well. So likewise, for people that are wondering out there, actually, uh, the gold mount battery system, the way that it mounts on would be quite a bit larger than the actual V-mount. The V-mount clip is a lot smaller as far as how it mounts on. So because we're trying to make the 60D and 60X the most compact lighting system we can do, uh, having a gold mount system would actually make it a lot larger than we want to be. So it's actually not feasible for this design, which is why we had to choose the V-mount system here. So again, just a mounting system. It's not an active mount. It's not like it charges it or powers the actual light through that V-mount. Again, it's just a clip and a mount at the end of the day. Okay. Let's see. Let's pick another question that I like. Okay. I like this question. Okay. So the question is, uh, does the 60X have the same optical color blending as the 300X? And will it work with the Spotlight Mini Zoom? Okay. So... <clears throat> This question is important because for a lot of you guys out there, you know that the 300X and the 300D, they work with the spotlight mount that we already made for the Bowens mount system. And the 300X is particularly important because you need color blending optics to go in front of your LED to blend your bicolor lights together so that when you project that light, it comes off as a consistent color instead of, you know, uh, warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool, little splotches across the light. So uh, one thing I need to note here is that these are actually not the same technology as far as how the light comes out. So again, this is all LED that we're talking about here, but with the 300X, we're talking about a light that is a bare bulb COB. So again, the bare bulb COB uses color blending optics. This is actually already blending it through the actual optics that it goes through. So that focusing glass that's actually built into the 60D and 60X, that will blend the color before it comes out of the light in the first place. So what that does mean is that the 60D and 60X is already a blended light that comes out. You don't need more optical blending modifiers to go in and actually make sure that light projects, which is again, the reason why it works with the Spotlight Mini Zoom. Okay, so for our third and final question, I think this is a good one here to cover. The question is, can the 60X be used with 
Bowens mount accessories like the Fresnel 2X or the Spotlight mount. What happens if I use a Fresnel 2X on a 60D or 60X? Do I get more output? Okay, so the question again, can you use a Fresnel 2X on the 60D and 60X? Now, in the video, we showed that the mount does attach and then it does work. So if you wanted to plug them in, theoretically, it would still shoot light and it would still work. But to answer your question, no, it would not make sense because you've already got a Fresnel built in. You've already got optics built into the actual light. And if you want to get more light, putting in a second Fresnel would actually not give you more light. Actually, the glass would actually eat up more light. So it actually reduce the amount of output that goes through it. So to be clear here, you've already got focusing optical elements inside of the light. If you're going to try to double focus it through another pair of glass or another patch of uh, optical lenses, it's actually going to reduce the overall output. So for people out there wondering, that means that you should not use the Lightstorm 60D or the 60X with optical modifiers like the Spotlight Mount or the Fresnel 2X. That is a reason why, again, it has optical modifiers built into the actual light itself and why we also have a Spotlight Mini Zoom to work with it separately. So um, the technology is a little bit different there too. The COB to actually going through optical lenses that are built in, that's not the same. It's, the light's gonna operate totally differently as well too. So uh, good question though, very important to go through. Alrighty, so I think that just about wraps it up for questions. Um, and I think that also wraps it up for today. So for everybody that's watching this, um, I wanna say thank you for tuning in. For all the Aperture user group people out there, all the people that are on the Aperture Facebook user group, you guys are the best. Thank you for all the feedback. Thank you for tuning in and for being so darn funny, honestly. Uh, you guys make all the days as far as the after team go and all the time that we've been putting in and all the work that's been going in, especially over the past couple of years. I wanna say thank you to everybody that's been tuning in and hanging out. So again, I know that we're recording these a little bit before, but uh, here's a message from past Ted to one day in the future Aperture audience. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of this launch. We've got some big things coming out this year, uh, some really large releases that we can't talk too much about yet, but for everyone that's been posting in the group and leaving feedback, it absolutely gets seen by all the engineers. It absolutely goes into the products. And uh, I just want to say thank you again for being such an amazing community. But without much further ado, I am Ted. This is Aperture. This is the 60D and 60X launch. And of course, we will catch you guys next time.